began this study of shoes and footwear and thinking about identity, it's, in a way it, it's a way of extending the work that we've been doing uh, for a number of years, looking at identity as something that's lived out. I think often in, we tend to assume our identity is something that's sort of fixed, like a badge that we wear on our shirt. But actually what sociologists and anthropologists are understanding in terms of identity today is about how we live out who we are. And I think it doesn't take much to recognise that in different situations, we kind of feel like different people. You know, different sides of us come to the fore. Um, with certain friends, we find that we're more funny or more humorous, etc., etc. So, so it's that idea of identity as something that's quite mobile um, and that it's never wrapped up. You know, we're always kind of developing new aspects of ourselves and so on and so forth. You know, when you're researching things that are very central to who people are, and yet, you know, for a social scientist talks about them in these very abstract ways, you have to really tackle this problem of how can you get people to spell things out? You know, how can we tell another person, you know, well, what's it really like to be me? And, and how different do I feel when I, you know, when I, after I'm married or when I graduated? You know, it's quite hard to express that. I mean, in a way, you could say, you know, the shoes are our vehicle or our passport into that kind of knowledge, that kind of insight into how people, you know, be who they are. I suppose at the heart of the project is doing case study work with people, which is, is a kind of recognised method, but you know, a lot of studies will just do one-off interviews with people. What, how we designed the project was actually to, to have you know, up to a year with a person and really try and, okay, you know, we can't live in their wardrobes, but to really get a, a sort of in-depth sense of their lives through their shoes. Well, I used to wear brothel creepers all the time before I got back into wearing high heels. Um, this is a brothel creeper, a dusty brothel creeper. Uh, ta -da. And there used to be, if somebody had broths on, you knew they were into a particular kind of music or a particular kind of scene and you would instantly have some kind of connection with them. So say you're in a pub and you're standing next to somebody, male or female, and they've got a pair of broths on, you know that you could say, oh, you're right, like shoes. There's some kind of, it was like a shared shorthand maybe. For Like, I imagine if you had tattoos ten years ago, if you were somebody that had a massive full sleeve of tattoos, and somebody else had one, you would instantly know that you had some kind of commonality. Whereas now, tattoos and brothel creepers all over the place. So, you see teenagers in brothel creepers or brothel creeper style shoes and they sell them in new look and shoe and all these high street shops and it's just a bit weird. So we go and interview them three times through that year. So on the first interview what we do is just get them to take us through all of their shoes and that might mean going up to the bedroom and looking in the wardrobe it might be the four shoes they've got under the radiator in the kitchen you know it's enormously varied uh, but we always use if you like a kind of prop so the first time what we asked everybody to do is to go through their shoe collection um, and write down all the shoes they'd got and think about how much they paid for them where they bought them and so on to you know to build a little picture of each shoe so the interview can be quite long we film it because we're interested in the shoes as things um, so you know actually once you start to look carefully if somebody's talking about their shoes you know how do they handle them how do they hold them do they cradle them do they put their hands inside them do they do they want to put them on their feet to show you what they look like on all those things happen during this kind of tour of the shoes that we do. Um, and often stories will come out then. Seven years old, or 25 years old at least. Um, and they're nice leather shoes with leather soles. And they fit me absolutely perfectly. So when my dad died, um, because they fitted me, 
perfectly. And my mother said I should, I should have them. And then what we ask them to do is keep a log. From the moment their feet come out of bed, what goes on their feet? And every time they change their shoes, we ask them to enter that in the log. And that gives you a surprising insight into what pe- the sort of texture of people's everyday lives, really, which is quite hard, hard going. And again, it makes them think about something that perhaps they, they can't necessarily spell out. And the thing I found uh, nice about them, I, I saw them in TK Maxx in Scarborough uh, years and years ago when I was still at university, and they were £35, and I thought, oh, I've not got anything diesel designery things but I'll, I'll get those and I did and um, later on when I was in London doing my artwork thing I remember meeting someone who was really into diesel but specifically diesel and he, he said how much were they they must have cost you a fortune oh, 35 pounds from TK Maxx in Scarborough and it was livid absolutely livid that I'd managed to pick up this dream pair of shoes for next to nothing Another task we're asking um, is for them, and again, it's, we've given them a blank sheet here, but we've asked them to do a, a scrapbook where, you know, they haven't got us sitting there asking them questions. Um, it's their place to express their relationship with shoes. I need the log for that. Have I given the log back oh, to you? Well, oh, I've had to keep the, the, the key, isn't it? It's the key. Yeah, but they were meant to go in the scrapbook. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got to put these in the yeah. screen. Right. So I can't do so, this. Rachel uh, Dilly is the full-time researcher, so she's carrying out all of these activities. So it's Rachel who is um, contacting people. Rachel is setting up the interviews and building relationships. And I think that's, her, that's very much how we saw it at the beginning, is that this is a project where you don't just go in and try and get somebody talking and then disappear. This is a project where you build a relationship with the person. The better people get to know Rachel, the more they trust her and are willing to, to talk about all kinds of things. I mean, the thing about shoes, I, I, I don't like buying shoes because it's very stressful. Because you can never be absolutely sure that they fit. Um, because, I mean, obviously when they're new, they, they tend to be a bit tighter and a bit stiffer than they are later on. The other thing we do is we want to see the shoes in movement. So we ask them, you know, what would be a typical activity in your life um, where, you know, certain shoes uh, would be worn? Uh, and then they choose and we go along and film them. So we see the shoes actually in action. So it's important to look at the body. As I say, it's that kind of lived dimension of it all that gives us insights. And I think because we're working with using this kind of case study method, we've only got 15 people. But once you start listening to their voices and reading what they say, looking at their shoe logs, you get a sense of how absolutely distinctive each individual is. I suppose I think I've got unusual feet. Uh, one of my, my feet is very small and has got like a prosthesis on it. And I was born like that, with, with just a, really a, um, a heel and one large toe. So it's, it's actually a sort of child-sized foot. Obviously, the state of your feet and what shoes you can wear has had quite a big impact on my life and what, what I do. I, have, I do not go to my friend's weddings very often um, because of I can't wear the right outfit. Uh, I avoid. I, I actually do go now because I'm. I, I'm not so close conscious as I used to be. But as a young person, I used to avoid going to uh, friends' weddings because I couldn't wear the right shoes and wear the right outfit. Being involved in this project helped me to to engage a little bit more with thinking about my feet. And I do actually look at shoes in shoe shops now, and that is something I don't very often. I only started doing recently, actually. This is a project very much about people's everyday lives, and we're. One of the things we're very concerned to do is reflect this back to people, to get people to actually, you know, have a different kind of insight into what these things mean. So we've already done an exhibition which sort of included some of the images you see behind me and a big display of all of the postcards, greetings cards and so on, and we invited people into the university to see that. These uh, shoes that are on display are actually dance shoes. Uh, they look rather small for size 8, but in actual fact, there's plenty of room inside 
and the leather is very soft. Uh, I, I bought them for sequence dancing and I use them for quite a while until my wife died. Um, and since then, that which is now just over a year, uh, I haven't danced at all. But um, I did start using them uh, as carpet slippers, but unfortunately I caught the carpet once or twice and the edges have just turned up, as you see. We also have a contribution to make to academic thinking. You know, as I say, where, where we started this work on identity. But, you know, trying to, as it were, put another bit of flesh on that in terms of knowing who we are, you've got to get down to, to grassroots, as it were. You know, you've got to get down to the feet and see how the, uh, the identity is lived out. Mm -hmm.